Hi Pisces and welcome to your New Year's breakdown. This is an, a general reading for the chart of the New Year, which gives us an idea of what the year will be like coming in. It is aligned to your rising sign and that may also be your sun sign, moon, Venus, Mars, and Saturn are all relevant if you read this, if you listen to this reading. Just to give you a quick rundown of Pisces, you're probably really familiar because it's your sun sign or you're influenced strongly by it. Um, but Pisces is the last sign of the zodiac. It is the energy of awareness on a spiritual level. It is the culmination of all signs. So when we see a sun in Pisces, for instance, we know that that person has gone through all the signs of the zodiac in past lives, past incarnations, and have has gleaned the information and experience from all of them. It's kind of like when you think of black as a color in reflective lighting, black includes all colors of the rainbow. That's the way Pisces is. Pisces encompasses all signs, so it gets along with all signs, and it is the chameleon of the zodiac. Whatever energy is around them, the people that they surround themselves with, they can easily pick up that energy and behave like them or have interests that are similar. And so they are really well liked by most people. They are a go along type of energy. So they have lower boundaries. They are the wise one. So they are universally loving. And this makes them very attractive to most people with the exception of maybe um, Gemini and Sagittarius, which are at square or 90 degrees to Pisces energy. Because of the difference in how they look at actions and behaviors, that is a energy that doesn't resonate to Gemini and Sagittarius per se, but Sagittarius's ruler is Jupiter, and Jupiter is a co-ruler historically of Pisces, and so the Jupiter energy of Sagittarius is expressed through seeking spiritual understanding which Pisces has. Pisces is the shaman of the zodiac and uh, really the wise old person in the hills. Pisces is the energy of the Buddha. Uh, so Pisces is a strong influence in your chart. And in the new year, we had Vesta, which is the first energy in the first house. And if you want to know where the first house is, it's the one between nine and eight o'clock on the clock, if you're familiar with that. Um, it's on the left side and just down a little, that is where it ends. So Vesta is the energy or asteroid of hearth and home. You've been going through a Vesta transit in Pisces, which means that you're much more focused on the home and uh, nurturing through the home. Also, if you have other transits that go over that, it really influences them for home and hearth energy. Neptune is at 22 degrees of Pisces right now. Neptune is your natural ruler. And that means that there's even more pronounced energy in the water segment, the water realm. And that means emotion as we feel it in our bodies, it expresses as emotion. Whenever Neptune is influenced by other planets, say the moon, or um, comes up against it, you'll feel the shifts going on with that. So Neptune is pretty much your influencer in your chart. And uh, right next to Neptune, is the energy of Juno. Juno is the asteroid of marriage, and it is a moon of Jupiter. So when you have Juno in the first house, your mind may wander more towards marriage. Pisces as a sign historically marries frequently. They are very idealistic in love. And um, an example of this is Elizabeth Taylor. She had eight husbands. Elizabeth Taylor had Mercury, Mars, and Sun all in Pisces. Yeah, it is the energy of being in love with love and it's agape love, universal love. We are unconditionally loving. The energy of Pisces rules art, the arts and part of that is videos, photography, film. So Pisces rules the entertainment industry pretty much in Hollywood, but um, also photographers and artists. It is an energy that enjoys poetry. Um, I really think the humanities too. So music, arts, literature, all of that. So going to your second house, Jupiter is in Aries now. Jupiter spent a good portion of last year going back and forth between Pisces and Aries. 
and he is now fully in Aries and will be there through May. And so Jupiter is expansion. It's freedom loving. It rules horses and racing and athletics. It rules travel and spiritual growth. It is higher education. It is the professors in higher education. And so having Jupiter move into your second house, second house is the material world. First house is expression and drive and um, the drive to come forth, so to speak. So when you think of the first house, the natural ruler is Aries and it is the expression of birth. And so going into the second house, the second house is naturally ruled by Taurus and Taurus is the material world. So you go express into the, into the realm of human and then you understand your place in the material world and what your value is in the material world. So that is an overlay of what energy falls there for you. And with Aries there, it is new beginnings and new energy and bringing forth energy of money and material goods and value. So uh, Aries is the sign of the salesperson. They are really good at self-promotion. They are interested in the blood or have a connection to blood. Um, Aries rules the blood, it rules the head. And it's really, I mean, if you think of the ram, it is the imagery of headbutting and coming forth to force things to happen. And so when we have Aries highlighted, we will find this drive, this force that wants to just get it done and move. And it is the sign of athletes. All the fire signs are related to athleticism somehow. Just in case you're wondering, Leo is the one that rules gaming or risk-taking, also gambling. And Sagittarius is the sign of the collective. So it is the energy of uh, team building and teams and sports. But it is also very athletic. Um, so Jupiter, the ruler of Sagittarius, is athletic as a sign, as a planet, and moving into Aries, very focused on athletics. And it's not surprising that there was an injury, a significant injury in football last week uh, for the Buffalo Bills. And uh, I think the guy's last name was Hamlin. And so he he's in the hospital still, but he's coming out of his issue. He had a hit to the chest, which I think stopped his heart. Anyway, um, athletics and ath athletes are part of this energy right now. And we also saw Pele pass on last week. So that's kind of in the news in the collective consciousness right now. It also rules people of color and racism. So I think over the course of this year, we're going to see that. And Jupiter is the energy of foreign soil and foreigners. So when you have, and also real estate. So when you have Jupiter move into the second house, any of these things can come into your experience in the material world, but in a general way, I'm reading this as there's a strong energy coming in about possibly buying a house. You are more interested in material goods right now because the second house rules materiality and um, Jupiter looks to express a greater story and Aries wants to take action and Jupiter is a very action based planet as well, being the ruler of Sagittarius, they share um, archetypes. And it is this the energy of the centaur and he wants to go, he wants to race, he wants to keep moving and not look back. So it can be an energy where we express um, ambition and not worry about consequences, which do come. Saturn gives us consequences, um, but Jupiter pretty much just acts with wild abandon. And it is an optimistic sign. So you will have new beginnings this year. You had a lot of new beginnings last year. There may be new ways of looking at money and finance or new ventures that you're going to do new projects. Chiron is the wounding. Chiron is also humanities. Um, and that's the next symbol down in the second house in Aries. And Chiron will bring us the wounding, the male ego, the male, the divine masculine wounding. And so it can be around violence, aggression, assertiveness, and anger those areas, in, and it may have something to do with the sex drive as well. So we're going to see this masculine expression for half of this year. The second half, Jupiter goes into Taurus and will stimulate your house of communication. There will be an extended reading that will talk more about at the energies in Aries as they transit, and you can find that link below under extended readings. 
Um, yeah, so this year, definitely, there will be shifts going on. May 5th, Jupiter goes into Taurus, and that brings us energy into your third house of communications. That means that the energy in your communication sector and your thought sector resonates with Taurus. And Taurus is a slower energy. It really likes to chew on the idea. It does not move fast. The year came in with Uranus and Taurus, which has been there for quite a few years now, maybe five to seven. And North Node in Taurus, where Uranus and Taurus have joined together over the course of last year, this creates a strong destined moment around communications, thought, lower elementary education, but also expansion of how we understand things, information coming in from the collective, and uh, just a broader sense of embracing the material world through thought, through unusual occurrences, unusual people coming into your environment. Those people can resonate to you in how they think of the world, in how they view uh, behaviors of other people and the way they process information, the thought processes, which is the mercurial energy associated with the third house. The moon is there as well at the same degree as the North Node, which is home and hearth in Taurus, which could be investments. It could be money. It could also be love. Um, I got chills with investments going into love. So I'll leave that with you. There's something that resonates for you with that. And moon is the energy of home and mother and children and being a nurturing person in your children's lives and the family life. But it's also nurturing through money and nurturing through words in this house. So that is kind of a theme coming in for you this year. And Taurus energy really loves uh, showing its love through material goods or through material actions. It's a tactile sign. It likes textures. It likes flavors. It likes cooking. So you may have more cooking ideas and recipes on your mind. Third house is the house of the writer. So, you know, write a cookbook and, you know, get that out in the world. That could be something that a task, a, a project or an avocation that you do. Moving on to the fourth house, you have Gemini ruling the fourth house. That is the energy of Mars in Gemini right now. Uh, coming in this year, Mars was in Gemini retrograde. And Gemini energy in the home and family sector means you have a strong connection or situation usually associated with siblings. That can mean that you are a twin or you have twin energy. There is duality around the home. And so you express yourself in this way and that way. So it's not just like, okay, I'm presenting myself and this is who I am. It's like, I'm this person today and that person tomorrow, and I may be a different person the next day. Um, you express duality in that way, or you may treat your family a certain way one day and then change your mind and treat them a different way the next. And there's no rhyme or reason as to why you're behaving that way. It's just going with the flow of your energy in that particular house. You are a talker. You may have a very chatty family. You're a social family. And Mars in Gemini means action is being taken towards the family. That is the focus whenever planets go in Gemini for you. But specifically this time, Mars is in Gemini, which meant the last part of the year last year was focused on family, but Mars went retrograde. And that means that some action or words that you have taken in the course of the end of last year are now being reviewed and you have to decide something. There is a decision going on with this energy. It means duality and there are two of something and you may not be able to keep both of that particular situation. So it can mean two homes, two families, um, two siblings that are at war and they're asking you to decide which one you wanna be closer with, you know, all of this. It is contracts. So there could be some kind of contract that needs to be signed within the family arena. And of course, when Mars went into Gemini last year, uh, that energy might have triggered you as well to take action towards the home in moving or, you know, set up a situation that when Mars goes out of your home and family sector in, in the near future, that will shift and change. Again, um, this is coming up this coming year. The longer reading that nails down those specifics will be in the uh, link in the description below. So Mars retrograde trying to make the choice. It goes direct January 12th, which is really early in the year. So once it goes direct, you're going to have 
clarity about which way to go because the drive towards the future is Mars. And you may have been hung up on which way to go, which, what to do, you didn't know. So now you're getting a better understanding of which way to go after mid-January. Your fourth house is the house of children, romance and creativity and leadership. It is the natural Leo house of the Zodiac. You have cancer ruling that house, which means uh, the energy of the moon is influential in your life with children, which means nurturing, which means mother energy. Friends are also in this house. You may be a very nurturing person to your friends and they see you as kind of a mother figure, mother hen. Um, it is creativity and that means domestic ideas around creativity. So cooking, cleaning could also be a very in encouraging or embracing or uh, nurturing thing for you to do. Just everything around the home, domestic, it could be sewing, you know, traditional, traditional mother rules. Um, you know, cleaning, I hate all that, but it's so sexist, but you know, that's kind of the way we assign moon because moon energy is mother. It is the drive to have a beautiful home and to express through the home. So any of the domestic arts are going to be encouraging or, you know, interior design, even designing a home. My grandmother had strong energy around designing homes. She designed multiple homes and built them. Currently, you have Black Moon Lilith and Pallas Athena in this energy. And both of these entities make a very strong feminine energy expression. So you are really kind of the warrior goddess, the warrior um, female, which is Pallas Athena's energy. Black Moon Lilith is a point in the sky that is determined by the position of the moon as related to the apogee or the apogee orb around the sun, around the earth. So it is just like a mirrored energy to the dark side of the moon on the other side of the earth, which makes it almost the black dark side of the moon. That's why it's black moon Lilith. Lilith in mythology was the wife of Adam from his rib. And she ultimately left him because she would not be sexually subservient to him. So she is a very strong feminine energy as well. And both these entities are in your house of romance, creativity, and children. So you are finding your inner feminine goddess in expression of any of those areas in your life right now. You have a few houses with no planets in them currently um, in transit, but if you have planets there, they are influencing you. Or if the planets transit those houses, they will influence you in that area. You do have rulership of each of those signs, each of those houses. And so the next one is your work environment, which is Leo. Leo is ruled by the sun. And so every time the sun changes signs every month, you have a different shift around work. Or if you're really in tune with the sun as a ruling energy for your work environment, you can feel that. But it means you need to connect to people one-on-one. -on -one. You definitely need to have your behavior, your uh, contributions recognized. You need the ego strokes because that is part of the sun energy. You really enjoy being the center of attention and have a strong, um, well, as far as work is concerned, um, Pisces isn't so happy with being in the spotlight per se, unless there is a strong film connection or, you know, they're really the behind the scenes person. And Leo is where you shine. Leo is where you want the attention and accolades. And that is in the work environment from other people. You love connecting and friendship. You probably have many friends in your work life. And so when the planets go through there, which is Leo season. Leo season is late July, early August. Moving on to the upper half of your chart, Virgo rules your house of marriage and partnership. Virgo is a very good teacher of the Zodiac, is really good at parenting, and looks at children in a very empathetic way. They are the sign of service. So when in marriage, you are maybe more practical. You may take care of the money, take care of the home, do the tasks, do more chores, but you're also very nurturing and you really embrace that service energy. Um, it is work, health, and service. So there is some connection to that energy. That's also the sign of military. So you may have a partner who is in the military. Moving on, oh, and Virgo energy is the Virgo season, which is late August, early September energy. The eighth house, which is naturally Scorpio's house, is the sign of commitment in partnership. And for you, commitment is Libra. And Libra is balance and justice. 
It is also diplomacy. You'll have Libra triggered in late September, early October. And that is when you really um, feel the energy stronger. And every month when the moon goes through Libra or the moon goes through Virgo, all these houses will be triggered once a month. And then um, some longer with transits of the sun and other planets. So Libra is balance and justice. She is the social worker of the Zodiac. And you will feel in marriage and partnership that you have lower boundaries. Your partner may have a stronger influence on your decisions around money. You want balance. You want nice, uh, pleasant environments and peace at home. And so you have a harder time standing up for yourself within the marriage partner, within the marriage. And so, um, yeah, that energy expresses that way late in the year. The ninth house is the house of foreign energy, travel, higher understanding, spiritual inspiration, music, and um, athleticism. With Scorpio in this house, there is a passion for those things. There is a passion that must be expressed. You may have a passion for learning and a passion for teaching. Um, it is also the energy of research and doing things behind the scenes. So you're a very smart person through, and I got chills with that, through what you seek to find and understand. You may even have a passion for travel that gives you more understanding of people of other cultures in the world. And uh, currently South Node is in this house. So South Node is how we bring in energy from a past life. And you may find that you're more inclined to do things in places that have a, a spooky vibe about them because Scorpio does rule the underworld. It rules the hidden, it rules death and rebirth. And cemeteries might be uh, an embracing place for you, especially with Pisces on the first house because Pisces does rule transition and death along with Scorpio. Pisces is the end of things. And it is also the spiritual connectivity to the afterlife. So there's a strong connection between um, the water signs, but specifically Scorpio and Pisces. Sagittarius, natural ruler of travel, is on your midheaven in career. So you may have a career that is associated with athleticism, travel, uh, travel agencies, higher understanding professors in colleges, especially with the Pisces sun or rising or other planets and Sagittarius on the midheaven. You even could be in the religious realm. You might be a priest, but I doubt you'd be watching this. Um, yeah, growth and expansion of spirituality and understanding. You are a world traveler. Maybe you travel in your career. And it may mean that you need a lot of freedom within the career energy and I, my ex-husband used to travel every week down to Miami from Orlando and back. And that Sagittarius, he was a Saturn in Sagittarius, is a Saturn in Sagittarius. And so the connectivity between Capricorn ruling that particular house and Sagittarius means that there is a really strong inclination and love of being on the go for career. Capricorn, the career energy, is in your house of people associated with career networking and soul group. It is also the humanitarian energy and environmental energy because it's Aquarian energy. So Pluto is there currently. It has been there since 2008 and 2007. It went back and forth a couple of years and it fully moved in around 2008. So we saw the housing energy, which is Sagittarius as well, real estate, crash and burn at that time coming down to practical terms and responsibility. That is still to be seen with the housing market, but for you, it is about being responsible to the career, to the people you know within the career and the employer. You have a really lovely energy of embracing the pragmatism in your career, and you express that energy through responsibility and reliability to the people that you've given your word in career. So once you do what you're going to do within your career, and you know that's specific to your Saturn. So if you are interested in getting a reading to find that out, you can contact me below. Saturn rules your career and Capricorn is ruled by Saturn. So in the 11th house of expression of a higher understanding, you bring that awareness of the other world down into the material world. So information comes to you quickly and you're able to act on that. And you're actually very good at reading the energy of the moment. So knowing trends and expressing yourself 
um, with that intuition in the material world, in the, the cor corporate world, or even career. The year came in with Sun, Mercury, Pluto, and Venus in Capricorn. Venus and Pluto were joined up on New Year's Day and New Year's Eve. And so that means coming into this year, there could be some strong energy associated with some changes with a woman in your career. Could be family, could be um, someone who's elderly or a more of a mentor who is female, who may be transitioning out of your life so that you now are the responsible one. Mercury retrograding Capricorn in your community house means that you are trying to understand the other people that you associate with in a better way. Mercury retrograde means something happened and then you may have dealt with someone in your career that isn't being forthright with you, which is a real bugaboo for Capricorn energy. And so Mercury retrograding means that you have to adjust to some information you found that wasn't accurate or wasn't forthright. Also with Mars retrograde in Mercury's sign of Gemini in your home and family sector, there could be some uh, shifting and adjusting going on. It's a difficult energy, 150 degrees apart. And Mercury goes all the way back to 10 degrees, which is an inconjunct or 150 from the Mars energy when it gets to its peak position. So this is the third week of January that's going to be really strong around that perfecting energy. So it is a decision and choice. It has to do with a career move and how the family reacts. So know that that energy is there. And then uh, Mercury is information and communication coming in, ideas and, and messengers. So some message came in that gave you information that was maybe not what you wanted to hear and something you have to adjust to or review in this current time until Mercury goes direct, which is going to be 18th of January. Pluto has been going through this same house, and it means that you may, may have taken in your group around career more than your fair share of the work, and especially because it's Aquarius's house, and Pluto is major life change, and Uranus is in trine to the energy of Capricorn. There has been a lot of shifting around how you take responsibility and ownership within the work environment and within your career. Um, this is changing. As Pluto gets to late degrees, you're going to own what you want to do. It's about you. It's not about everyone else you're taking responsibility and ownership for. It's about owning your choices and your life. And so there is a really strong shift coming in March when Pluto goes into Aquarius into your 12th house. You will psychologically and psychically be drawn to being more independent, and you don't want to continue on with the same path with um, taking ownership for everyone else's stuff. That being said, the end of the year, Pluto goes into Aquarius. Venus is already in Aquarius as I'm recording this, which is the first week of January. She just went in on the second. And so Venus is showing us currently how this is going to start playing out. She shows us our desire. Follow your desire. She is an initiator. Um, she is showing us, and specifically Pisces people, where we need to shore up um, our inner world and what that looks like. It is a strong connection to humanitarianism, to the environment. And if you're feeling drawn to do something more on a global level or through social work or through charity, this is the beginning of a whole theme that's coming in for another 22 years as Pluto is in Aquarius for that time. You'll have a couple adjustment periods over summer in this year and in 24 because Pluto goes retrograde back into Capricorn. So you're really wrapping up the old story about the old career choice, but you are moving on to a new one and it may even be metaphysical. It may be um, the energy of channeling, the energy of connectedness to engineering. It could be understanding science. It could be astrology. It could be astronomy, space, um, anything Aquarian, which is technology-based, thought-based, um, math, science, those kind of endeavors, and research, invention, all of that. Aquarius in the 12th house is an amazing inventor. You can see things with your mind's eye. You've got your thumb on the pulse of the collective, so you know what's coming in. You have a very deep psychic awareness of trends and pathways of society. So 
you can really utilize that in this life to get things out there in the marketplace if you want. Aries salesperson in your second house of money. And finally, Pluto moving into Aquarius March 23rd is going to really shift you mentally and psychically to a new path. Don't fight that. Go with it. I've got chills when I tell you this. It's important because you are important to raising the vibration of the collective. Pisces energy and Aquarius energy are really the next 50 years and 60 years. That is where we're headed. Youth coming in today will have this energy very strong in their charts. People born around the turn of the millennium have very strong Aquarian energy in their charts. And then right after that, um, Neptune and Uranus have been through Pisces, which again, Uranus is the ruler of Aquarius in the sign of Pisces, strong humanitarian bent, psychic connection, and desire to really go forward and do something that raises the vibration and expands the awareness and wisdom of the collective. And that is a very amazing um, path and life purpose that you have. Saturn currently is in Aquarius. It has been really showing you how that life purpose can play out. And there will be a tremendous shift with Pluto moving in to the sign, Pluto moving into Aquarius and Saturn moving out into Pisces. This is a time where you are taking ownership of your psychic awareness and your um, connection to spirit in career, in your life purpose. And then Pluto coming in is really what value do you see others putting on you? And do you see your value related to others? So that's going to be a deep psychological and psychic pathway for you for the next few decades, actually. And with that, I thank you for showing up and watching this. Please do check out below the extended reading on Patreon and also come back another time and join us with the podcast weekly. Take care. Have a great 2023 and um, enjoy. Hi, this is Shelley. Thank you for joining us this week. To contact me for a private reading, go to angeliczodiac.com under the readings tab. To purchase my ebook, Learn Astrology, you can find it at angeliczodiac.com. Background music was provided by Kevin McLeod at incompetech.com. Be sure to check back next week and subscribe through iTunes at Astro Energy Astrology Show.